welcome back to another episode of Queens Chronicles the series. Today we are talking about a very um, important topic. It's a, something that um, affects many women in our country and that is, uh, we call it life after loss. And basically what that is is um, dealing with losing a baby and how to um, come back from that loss. And I am super excited. We have one of my favorite people in the entire world here to share her experiences and um, to ultimately encourage um, all of us um, because we've all in some way experienced some type of loss. Um, and so I'm excited to hear um, her story um, today. So Shantae, how are you? Reverend Shantae. <laughs> Reverend Shantae. Yes. Moody. Moody. Yes, it's Newlywed. Yes. Oh, the Newlywed. Newlywed. Yes. yes. She's giving us all hope. Thank you, Jesus. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. So, um, Shantae, um, I guess we can start off by just asking, um, and I hope you don't mind me just kind of jumping right in. Um, can you tell us your story of, um, you know, what happened as far as you um, have getting me pregnant and um, the story that came from that? Sure. Not a problem. Um, so, I'm going to say 2006, I think it was. So, 2006, um, I was dealing with this dude and and I always say I got pregnant like like off of horrible would you get pregnant off of it was just horrible but anyway um this is real this is real this is how we are queen chronicles okay <laughs> the real stuff yeah no yes. filter but yeah so long story short um I was dealing with this dude I ended up getting pregnant and um about five and a half months into the pregnancy um, I actually had to deliver my son, and he passed away oh, uh, maybe about a couple of minutes after birth. So, and that's the that's the short part of the story. Right. But even through uh, having gone through pregnancy for five and a half months, there was definitely a bond there. Oh, and Anticipation of motherhood. So, can you talk a little bit about the bond? You know, sure. And, um, mm -hmm. Sure. So, um, so I so when I found I was pregnant, I just went gung ho like into planning i got the baby book i was oh. pressed to pick out the name yes. i had a thousand sonogram photos i she took did. pictures like every single she day did. i was in and My for family. me i was in maternity clothes in the second month wow so i literally yeah. was in maternity clothes. i mean i always been a little chunky but then add the baby it was like overnight you like know it was walked, like she woke up one like oh you're really <laughs> oh, wow. really having it so right i ended yeah. up kind of with that and i had this anticipation you know you just kind of start planning mm -hmm. you know the life of, of that child you know and then we found it was a boy it was like oh my god yes so i went like gung-ho crazy picking out names because my thought was okay when i when he goes to college i was like i want people to look at the uh yeah. his application and I was like, I don't want them to judge him off his right. name. Yeah, <laughs> so I would right. thought, okay, if I give him, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, Caucasian sounded name, uh -huh. that, you know, that would kind of push him. Mm -hmm. So I, so we had, mm -hmm. so I had, we had everything, I had everything planned. Mm -hmm. um, towards the middle, the unfortunate part was towards the middle of the pregnancy. Um, his father and I just started to have different opinions of, like, where he was supposed to live and, um, what we were how we were gonna raise them and so I kind of realized around maybe like third or fourth month that I might be doing this kind of by myself okay. um, but I had a strong village I really wasn't concerned um, with that <laughs> I was part of the village whoop, whoop. me 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 sorry I think the unfortunate thing about it though is you know pregnancy and I mean, conception pregnancy and birth is something that you're taught it's just natural you know, as a female, you're taught this is just this is how it happens. The natural order of things. I didn't really worry about. I mean, I wasn't really concerned about anything. Right. Um, and then I just remember kind of being at my mom's house. I think it was Memorial Day, Labor Day, something like Memorial, Memorial Day. Day, Memorial Day, and something just it just didn't feel right. Like okay. something just did not feel right. And um, that's kind of when everything started to happen. And so because the he didn't, um, so CJ that was his name CJ. He was a little special little baby. Mm -hmm. So when I thought that we were that I thought that I was miscarrying I thought that it was going to be kind of you know we, I went to the I went to the bathroom and I was like you know something doesn't something something's not right like I feel like I'm supposed to be pushing mm -hmm. but I know I'm not supposed to be pushing right, right. So I'm like something's wrong I and mean, my mom came in there and, you know we're crying and she's like just push and so we push and you know we hear this big old plop and the thought is oh my gosh like I'm just delivering my kid like in a toilet mm -hmm. like that's what I'm thinking and so um we, I go back in the rack, you know, I do everything, get up, go lay on the bed in my mom. They call the um, ambulance and the emergency tech, um, emergency individuals come out. 
And only to find out we to the hospital that I didn't deliver him. So I was still pregnant when I got to the hospital. What happened um, was his am- the amniotic sac ruptured. And so um, that was basically what I had pushed out. And so, um, you know, you're thinking to yourself, hold up. So what is, like, is he just floating in, like, limbo? Like, what's right. going on? And so, I mean, for that, it was a whole world because we get to the hospital. And, of course, you know, my friends and family are like, you know, it's, you, you're good. God's got this. And he's going to be a miracle baby. And so you try to, like, yeah, this is what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I remember going into the, the sonogram tech. And the sonogram tech was like, it's nobody's fault. Um, you'll get through this. Um, you know, just let it all happen naturally. And I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm literally like, like, what you talking about? What are you talking about? So we yeah. get out of the sonogram. And I'm, I'm ready to go home. Like, I'm like, okay, so what time, what time are we leaving? And you know, the doctor's like, we can't let you go. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna deliver this baby this weekend. And we want you to do it here. Um, I won't name the hospital, that's a whole nother thing. But um, so we, I was in the hospital from, for two days, he came on a Monday. And so I remember Monday, Monday um, he came on Labor Day, Memorial Day, Memorial, Memorial Day. Day, sorry. He came on Memorial Day and um, the doctor came in. It was it was weird how they did it because the nurse comes in first and she's like listening to the heartbeat. And the heartbeat was really strong. It was mm-hmm. really, you know, we were doing this. I'm thinking, okay, you know, we gonna still have this baby. And the doctor comes in literally, I wanna say 20 or 25 minutes later and it's like, you know, um, I had developed an infection um, that he needed to, they wanted to do what they called a spontaneous abortion. He was like, you know, um, your life is, is impacted right now and we'd rather deliver, have you have it do with abortion for you and save your life. And I was like, no, like, I'm sorry. She just let me hear a heartbeat. Like, are you kidding me? Jacked up hospital. Like, you just let me hear a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. And then you want to do an abortion? I'm like, absolutely not. So I was like, look, and I kind of settled within myself and I was like, okay, God, if you get him here, and I don't make it, I'm cool with that. You know, like whatever you need to do to get him here, let's, you know, kind of let's do that. Long story short, wasn't God's plan. Um, so I delivered him and I think my mom held him and he passed away while my mom was holding him. Um, and so literally, I think it was it was moments, like literally kind of like minutes. And so I had this I had this rule though, um, that I know Trees remember. So when I, the doctor said I was gonna, Delivery, you know, they didn't do epidural anything. They didn't really need to. I mean, I was six and a half months, so it wasn't like wasn't like he was huge. But I was like, no crying, like no crying, like no one can cry. Nobody, you know. So we sung the um, every, what was that Thai tribute joint? Every song, <laughs> every every like, and it's funny. Like we can laugh about it now, but I, I was there, and so I remember, I remember the, I remember having to make the phone call to the father. And being like, yo, Tay's on her way to the, to the emergency room. It's not looking good. Like, you need to get here. And then I remember getting to the hospital. And she, they had put her, like, in this room. And it's crazy because they put her in the, what's the maternity? Maternity, maternity ward. ward. And so he was kind of like, well, why we come to this section of the hospital? Like, it's not going to be good news why we're here. So we're in that section. And then we get in the room. And they tell her, like, she has to, get, she has to have the baby. And we're all like, and I don't know if she saw a tear. I, I don't know. She was like, no crying. No, nobody can cry. We all was like, oh. so now everybody's like trying to like suck it up because you want to be strong for her, but on the inside, your heart is working because you don't know, like you really don't know how to support somebody mm-hmm. that's going through that process. Because you know she's literally, you know, laying on a bed about to put, give birth to a, a baby that she just been told will not survive. And so, you know, ask the best friend, you kind of like. So I know I should be saved right now and be like, go, God, go. But I kind of like, yo, God, what you doing right now? Mm-hmm. And it wasn't even me, like, laying on the bed, but you sucked it up. And we sung Hezekiah Walker, Ty <laughs> Tribune, Fred, like, I mean, like, every upbeat gospel song we could think of, like, one would end, and somebody would start. We had, like, a choir in there. <laughs> and I saw a tear. I saw a tear. I saw a tear. I put them out. Yeah. But it wasn't, what it was was I needed, I knew I had an assignment. I needed to get him out. You know, the doctor had already said that if he has to go get him, then because of the state that he was in, he could come out with pieces. Mm-hmm. And I was like, so what you're not going to do is deliver my kid in pieces. So if you need me to get him out, then I need to be strong to get him out. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm strong enough to do this, but I know if I cry, like I know if I cry, like I might not stop. Like, so I'm like, nah, we're going to be strong. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to get this going. And if y'all cry, I'm putting y'all out. And I was putting jokers out. I was like, oh, is that a tip? You got to go. go you got what, to what go. What she said was, go get yourself together and then come back. <laughs> it was like, well, really? Like, I mean, you, I mean, because you was trying to beat it. So my question would be, as a person, 
trying to support the mom or even the dad? Like, what's your advice for someone trying to give support? Because you, we really don't know what to say. So, right. for first, what should we not say? And okay. then, and then, secondly, what's the best avenue for support in that kind of situation? Okay. So let me let me be honest. And I and, and I'm I'm a licensed minister. I believe that God heals. I know that God has a plan. But please stop telling people after they lie, lose somebody. God has a plan. Hmm. This was all in God's plan. This is not the time for that conversation. Yeah, yeah, right, I got yeah. that a lot. Like you know, this was all a part of God's plan. God has a plan for His God life. Does everything for a right. God has everything. You're like. This is just when you kind of say, you're in my thoughts and prayers. If you need anything, let me know. Like, that's just what you do. Right. You know, I, I mean, I, I knew, of course, even though I wasn't living my life the right way at that time. And just for the record, I was not licensed at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, not even, clear it up, even clear it up, clear it up. wasn't even a ministry, wasn't even a thought on my radar at that time. But I, I knew, I know God has a plan, but that was just, to me, it was like not the time to have everybody coming to me going, God has a plan. God knows what he's doing. God's going to do something in your life that didn't include him. You're just like, like, you don't, you know, you just like not that. right now, you yeah, know, you just yeah. say, you know, just, just kind of, you know, say you're in my thoughts, you're in my prayers, you know, mm -hmm. do anything you need, let me know. Because mm -hmm. if it's somebody like, for instance, this, this was my first child, first pregnancy. I didn't know what I needed. And then I can, I'm a little different sometimes because I am, I am a, I'm a strong willed and strong minded person anyway. Yeah. And so my, my process for grieving is a little different. Like I need to be alone for a second. You know, I need to process kind of what happened and, you know, and have my moment. And I'm not someone who likes everybody around. Like I don't want everybody in my face going, what do you need? What can I do? Are you okay? Like, it's just like, okay, just stop. Um, but for me, it's just it's just telling people, you know, whatever you need, I'm here for you, and give them their space, you know, mm -hmm. kind of respect their space. Um, if they don't want to talk about it, don't make them necessarily talk about. It. And that was one thing that kind of used to get on my nerves. Everybody was like, well, well, how are you feeling? What are you What are you thinking? It's like I don't know what to think right now. Like, I don't mm -hmm. I don't even know how I feel. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure. Kind of you know, in the beginning, it's like I don't know what happened. You know, I don't know if it could have been, but like I don't know. So the next couple of days for me were kind of a blur. Um, so I would just say, just kind of tell people, whatever, if you need something, let me know. You're in my thoughts, you're in my prayers, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then you had a second question. Um, I said, I said, what don't to say? What, I don't remember what to it. say. And what to, well, you, yes. you kind of yeah. answered it. You yeah. kind of know what to say. I, I have a question. So um, do you feel like this experience kind of, uh, not how did it affect your desire to have another kid or if it affected your desire to have another kid or to um, maybe even date again or like how did that how did it influence like your relationships and all of it like what was the domino effect that happened as or if there was a domino effect so it was just one big mess for me um, so first off I was I was I was so hurt and kind of broken behind it and I didn't want to tell my friends and my family and so I learned how to smile I learned how to when I when they would come around I would smile and I would joke and I would laugh and I would play with them and then I would go in my room and I would read his baby book and I would just look at all and I would just cry like yeah. like every single um, kind of night because I was like I didn't want to be a burden to anybody else so um, what it ended up doing though to be honest it did it, it for in the beginning I didn't want to live like I was kind of like you know what God whatever happens happens um and then the process the reason why the process hurts because when I delivered him everything wasn't delivered like the, they had to actually do um a dnc to, to get the placenta and everything else out and it just was it was it seemed like they had to keep doing surgeries i had to keep going back to the hospital and blood clots and i was like this is like the issue that never ends mm -hmm. like goodness crazy you have every time you go back you have to tell them why you're there you know it's like oh well i'm, I'm i came back today i had a blood I have a blood clot oh what's the blood clot from well, I had a baby, you know, two weeks yeah. ago, and oh, how's the baby? But he, and then you're just like, oh my gosh, but yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so you're just yeah. going over and over. And for me, I just was like, you know, God, because my thought was God controls everything, and I was like, you know what, God, you let this happen, don't talk to me. Like that's exactly how it was. God, you let this happen, don't talk to me. And because um, I didn't know how to process it, and then for my for my relationships with people, 
again because I didn't want to be a burden I just I smiled and I hung out and I went out and I you know I, I did whatever everybody want, wanted to do and then the second I got by myself I just would sit there and cry and so I went through it was a good six months of like depression um, and just questioning kind of understanding why and as far as the relationship with the um, his father mm -hmm. That just became non-existent because he just, I felt like he left me to deal with it by myself because it wasn't something, he, he lived in another state. It's like he, he didn't come home to help. He didn't want to talk about it. Um, he just kind of wanted to pretend like it never happened. And then as you mentioned, of course, you bond. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you know six and a half months pregnant. I'm singing to the baby every yeah. day and I'm eating everything that's not tied down to the table because I'm saying this is what he wants. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> oh, I'm making everybody else sing and say good morning to the baby. <laughs> no, this was like a, it was like a bonding process. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like it was a bonding yeah. process. She was so. on the couch like, say good morning, you got child. <laughs> okay, good morning, belly. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, like bright and early. That's how, but it did make me, it made me think about things that you think are natural and them not just being that natural. Mm -hmm. um, again, I didn't want to talk to God. I stopped praying. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped reading my Bible. Um, and, I, and I thank God because um, he had every right to kind of be like, okay, little girl, I'm yeah, done with you. Yeah, like, yeah. This is how you want to act. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would hear him call my name. And I was mm -hmm. like, no, no, I'm not doing this. Wow. Like, no. But, and I remember, I do remember that when I finally got back to the place where I remember saying, okay, God, what do you want? I was like, what do you want? Like, what do you want? And um, and I remember he didn't say anything. Like, I was just like, okay, you've been calling my name for like six months. And now I'm tired of you calling my name. What do you want? Like, I, you know, wow. I, I was I was ready to get, I was ready to die. Like, I remember thinking, I mean, I wasn't taking any precautions with anything. I was, you know, I, I drive fast, but I was driving like real, I was reckless. You know, just like if it ends today, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, God, what do you want? He didn't say anything. And I was like, what do you want? And um, I just, we just kind of started, he started talking to me about, he's like, what are you feeling? And I couldn't articulate for the first time, I couldn't articulate what I was feeling. So I was always taught that you don't talk back, not talk back, but you don't, you don't talk to God like that. Like right. you, he, you, 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 you need to come at God as you know super yeah. duper holy yeah. you know and i was like you know I, I didn't know how to relate to him in that way at that moment because mm -hmm. my heart was broken mm -hmm. you know and, I, and he's the one i blame mm -hmm. for my broken heart because i'm like you are the god that controls everything this baby's now dead and that's how i started to say like he's dead mm -hmm. people was like as they was like well what happened he died yeah. like mm -hmm. i would say it like that mm -hmm. and i was that's like very, so very hard because very, very, i didn't want to have the conversation because i hadn't it was a lot going on and so i was like and god i remember him saying mm -hmm. There's nothing that I can say to you today that will make this, that will help you understand what happened. And he said, but if you let me, I'll heal your heart. Oh, wow. And I remember this, it, um, and because I was on, they, my job put me on um, maternity leave for 10 weeks. I had a lot of time in the house by myself during the day. Mm -hmm. And I remember just crying. I mean, I cry. I don't think I ever cried like that before. I'm definitely not like a crier like that. Yeah. But I mean, this cry came out. And it was just like, you know, and I, and I let I let it all out to God. I was like, God, I am so disappointed in you. Like, I don't understand. Like, why would you let it? Like, what did I, I was like, what did I do to you? You know, for this situation to happen to me. Like, what did he do to you? Like, I kept wondering, did he suffer? You know, was he in any pain? Like, was he scared? And it was like, what did I do to you? You know what I'm saying? Like, you say you love me, but so why am I dealing with this? Like, this is not right. And that's when he kept saying, like, there's nothing I can say to you that's going to help you understand. But if you let me, he's like, you know, you, you can heal my heart. And that honestly um, was the, that was the situation that took me from reading the Bible and being able to quote certain scriptures mm -hmm. to really realizing that though, that's when I had my aha moment with God. That was the, 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 the scenario that turned me in the direction I needed to be in because he was no longer, I was no longer just reading, oh, he's a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a friend that's the closer to the brother. You know, you read it, but that was the, those were the moments when I realized it because, um, and again, God is holy. He is He is to be respected. He is to be revered. But he's also a father. You know, he's, he's a friend. And he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And, and as a good father, when we hurt, he hurts. Yeah. You know, and so, and he, he, he talked to me like his daughter. I wasn't, 
the girl, I am God. What we deserve. You know, I will strike you right now. All the way to God. Like, he wasn't get your life. All the way to God. You know, he literally became, he comforted me at night. And that may sound strange, but it felt like, it literally felt like at night that he was literally holding me. You know, like, it was just, and he was the one I unloaded to. And I was like, God, this just ain't right. Like, what in the world? And so we would talk about it. You know, we would have conversations. And I realized, and, and, and nothing again, nothing against, um, nothing, nothing against my church. I love my church, but at that time, we didn't have the necessary means to to assist somebody in that scenario. Because I did go to my church, and I, you know, I asked to speak to somebody. They put me in contact with an, uh, another individual who had gone through it. And when I got on the phone with her, she was like, "Well, you know." Um, you know, God heals all, and I don't know what I would have done if it hadn't been for my husband. And I'm thinking, I, I don't have that. a husband. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, <laughs> don't even have a boyfriend at this point. Maybe you forgot the memo, um, but um, I'm yeah, single. I'm, single. Like, I'm, I'm by my right. own. Like, I'm still a single mother. Really? Well, grieving the loss. I mean, I think one of the most profound things you said was when you were in that scenario where you could have lost your life, you said, you know what, let him come and take mm-hmm. me. So it just speaks to the value and the power of that connection. And also, if you were willing to lay down your life like that, just imagine how much God's love for us is so big and so profound. In your mortal being, you could say, take my son, let him live and let me die. I mean, I think that was an amazing expression of a mother's love. So, I mean, and to love like that and lose, Mm -hmm. I can only imagine that you had questions for God and that he would understand that. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I love that he understood that. I do, mm-hmm. and that's that's what I, I try to when I, I teach the youth at our church, and I try to you know talk to them about the love of God and the relationship with God, and to kind of get away from looking at him as the God that'll zap you or the God that's sitting with a checklist going, oh, so you ain't pray this morning? Mm. Oh, so you ain't have five minutes for devotion? Mm. You know, because he, I mean, yeah. he loved me even when he could have been like, well, that was your fault. And nobody tell you had sex. You knew you knew you wasn't supposed to be having sex before mm-hmm. you was married. Mm-hmm. Look, girl, this is all on you. But he mm-hmm. didn't do that. You know, he realized my daughter's heart is broken. She's confused. She doesn't understand. So let me kind of walk her through this process because I couldn't find any other um, outlet for that. They didn't have and most most grief um, counseling, um, I guess, scenarios, situations that I found at that time were for the couple. And as a single person, it was like, well, well, who was here, kind of yeah. for me? Who? Because I'm not, I'm not only grieving the loss of my son, I'm, I'm, I'm grieving the loss of a relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, this dude didn't show his behind in a way where I'm like, oh, that's brand new. You know, right? That's new. I didn't, I didn't. That's what we doing now? Oh, okay. You know, I'm capable of that. Right. right. And so, you know, I can look at it. Too. I mean, but you could. In a, in a way, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. If, if you say so, but um, I promise <laughs> in this, uh-huh. in this, in mean, today, I can look at it and go. I mean, all I can look at it and go, God, thank you that I am not connected to that dude yeah. um, for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. like, you know, yeah. you know. And then it was just so much I found out kind of afterwards because mm-hmm. the hospital they asked you if they want if you want to do uh, autopsy and stuff like that. And I had said no, mm-hmm. so I was like, I don't want you cutting him up. Like, don't. But this wonderful hospital. Did it anyway. Did it oh anyway. Gosh. And then sent me oh the pathology God. report with yeah. all the, it was just the worst. So it was oh like God. the experience that just would not end. It was like, when I, I mean, it, and the pathology report came like months later where you're trying to get some you know, type of semblance of okay and you get this letter in the mail. You're like, oh, okay. Big old, like, it was like a big letter too. Oh. Like, it wasn't even like a letter. It was like a envelope. So like these that. are like the portions of a baby you didn't cut up and okay. So, you know, I'm reading through it and he has some chromosomal you know, defects and things like that. And not saying that God couldn't have worked, you know, a miracle through yeah. that. But I, I believe wholeheartedly this was necessary to get me to my today. Yeah. Because again, wow. everybody wow. everybody has or will experience some situation yeah, that brings you to your knees where mm-hmm. you either Absolutely. are going to cry out to God Absolutely. or you just gonna walk away. Yeah. And um, I thank God that he kept tugging at me. Like he was like, I'm, I'm not going to let he's you, relentless. you know, he's like, I'm not going to let you go. Like, I'm, I'm not going to let you, you know, stay in this mood. I, yeah. You know, I didn't gave you six months. And I mean, I was like defiant six months, like, like morning he would wake up and I'm to cover. No, as if you can like cover up from God. <laughs> right. 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 You I can't see you. I can still see you. Right. And I was like, but I, but the funny thing is I went to church every Sunday. I participated in church activities. I smiled with my friends. I hung out with my niece. I did everything I thought I was supposed to. But the inside, I was dying. 
but that was, you know, I know that that was, this was God kind of go, okay, sweetheart, you know, I need you to know me. And this is how you get to know me. Unfortunately, this is how you get to know me. And I always hung, and he never told me why it happened, mm -hmm. but I always hang on to the fact that he was like, there's nothing I can say to you yeah. that's going to make it better. Because, I mean, because what could he have said? Well, you know, yeah. there's purpose. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, yeah. what's the purpose? Because you almighty God. Like, oh you could have made this happen. He could have came out. You could have made it worse. Right. And then I went <laughs> after that. It was so funny because I think then everybody had a baby. <laughs> it was funny. Oh I remember thinking, you gave her another baby? <laughs> She's not taking care of her first seven. You then gave the oh, so what is this? So I was like, okay, God, but those were the conversations I would have. And you asked me if it impacted me wanting to have kids. It didn't. Um, to be honest with me, now at the age I am, I'm like, God, whatever you want to do is what you want to do. You know, whatever. I like my sleep though. I'm gonna say, I was like, I like my sleep. Have a queen crop, baby. We need a new baby. Yeah, we need a new baby. But it did not. It did not change my. Um, it didn't change my desire to want to have kids. I didn't. Um, think about you know well I'm never I never want to do this again this was horrible um, it 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 ended relationships that didn't get to be ended mm. you know um, it it got me to the place where I remember sitting there thinking this was a dude Joe I was feeling this dude like I mean like I don't, I think I don't know if y'all y'all see like females we have sometimes we had that one dude we younger oh, that's like you keep running back and you're like, so you can do no wrong right you're like I know this is not great but. So cute though. Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah, god. Absolutely. And so he was like, and he I thought he was different. Lord. I thought he was different. Uh -huh. And right. when this scenario happened, and he, I feel like I was like, you showed me you. Yeah. So when he did come back, cause he did circle back around. Really? A few times. By that time, I was like, Nah, I shot it. So did you guys ever talk about or or you know discuss? You know the loss together, or you, or he. It was just kind of he continued to act like nothing. He ever just happened. so for him, I found out the time he had gotten me pregnant, he had gotten somebody else pregnant. Oh wow! And so he was, you know, living his best life. Um, you know, trying to repopulate. I guess you know the, the the city and the state that he lived in. Um, you know, he had you know whatever, and so um, that's why I was like, when you say he was grieving, so I'm thinking, mm -hmm. no, no. Not, I told okay. you, boo. I said, <laughs> in the camera, I was like, boo. I mean, you never know. I mean, maybe in his own way. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to put him on blast like that. But I it was, was just one life. of those things where it was like, he didn't, and, and he circled back around like a year later. Mm -hmm. And by that time, I mean, I had, you know, had, I was coming to grips and God yeah. was doing a work. And so I was literally like, okay, we're going to right, we gonna move one step. And he came right. back and he, I remember when I saw him, the first thing he said was, let me see your stomach where my baby was. And I remember thinking, oh, let me take no. these. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, and so we didn't really talk about it. I was like, dude, like, oh, no. Like, no. We don't, like, you don't even understand what I went through oh, over this last year. And you want to come in here oh, like, goodness. you know, like, oh, my goodness. Like, that it's all fun so and games. So, um, but I mean, hey, I'm, I'm again, I'm grateful that that's the connection that God decided to break. Mm -hmm. You know, my boo is amazing. Yeah. You know, so hey, Mr. Moody. <laughs> hey, Mr. Hey, hey, Moody. <laughs> I guess, like, one thing that I really admire about your story is an amazing testimony. And I, I guess I can relate to it with, you know, I've never experienced loss, but like, um, being able to look back on situations that God has put you through mm -hmm. and realizing that moment where God brought you to your knees, that surrender moment. And I feel like we've all, like you said, we've all been there, you know? And to me, it just takes a different level of spiritual maturity when you can appreciate those heartbreaks, mm -hmm. you know? Because you're able to look and see like the relationships that he ended, you know what I'm saying? The How much you grew as a person, you know? Um, your desires for yourself, for your life, you know? That's what I admire the most. Um, from you, you know what I'm saying? Because I, on the outside, I would I would never know. You just carry yourself in such a way where you are just right. don't. She's such a hater. Um, but but I love that about you. And and so I'm I'm always appreciative when people share their testimony because you know to be able to look back on things that were the most painful parts of your life and this, and to see the optimism in it and to be grateful for those moments like. Being able to say, like, wow, five years ago, I would have never been able to say that. Mm -hmm. But, like, now I'm, like, so grateful that you, as hard as it was, I'm grateful, God, that you brought me to this place. Because now I can, I've surrendered my will. I can, you can actually use me now, you know. It's, so I thank you for being um, vulnerable and, and open. Mm -hmm. 
he, he, his healing is amazing. I've ministered to other women mm -hmm. um, that have gone through it, or you know, they went through it, and kind of telling them there's there's a tomorrow. Yeah. You know, there's Absolutely. life after Absolutely. loss. You yeah. know, it, it, it hurts a ton because I feel like it's unnatural to lose your child. Like you shouldn't bury your your, your child. Right. Parents mm -hmm. should should never bury their child. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I know the gripping pain, but I always I mean, when I minister to women, you know, that have gone through it, I'm like, there's there's a tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and I and I don't try to. I don't. I don't try to compartmentalize their situation. Like I don't. I don't try to go. Well, you know. Well, did the doctor say what it was? You know. I just like. You know what? It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. It, it, it does. Somehow it doesn't. Somehow it doesn't. Like for me, it was. Um, it was. It was a number of things. With the main ones kind of being. Um, I have a lot of fibroids, and I make more information y'all want to know. But anyway, um, no, no. and they they actually competed with him. And was and he was struggling to get a good amount of blood supply, mm -hmm. um, and so you know when they did everything and they kind of looked, they gave me a, a couple of other things, and then some of it was um, my doctor did something that um, she wasn't supposed to do. So it was just like a whole bunch of stuff, you know, because you do start to ask yourself, well, did I do anything wrong? What could I have done yeah, differently? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we we all go through when yeah. something happens, yeah. like yeah. you know, yeah. like what did, yeah. you know is this my fault? Yeah. You know, and all of that. But I always tell women, you know. I kind of just walk them, I walk and talk with them as they want to walk and as they want to talk. You know, I pray with them. Um, and I'm like, you know what, God, God is the only person who can heal your heart the way it needs to be healed. Yeah. You know, he's the only one who will allow, like, who allowed me to have the situation happen. And I can sit here and talk to you guys about it, you know, and I'm not, right. there's, there's no tears coming out of yeah. my eyes. I'm not sad about it. I mean, I celebrate CJ's birthday every single year mm -hmm. uh, because he, he existed. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't He's discount them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I do that every single year, but then I can talk about it and I'm not, you know, I'm not crying. I'm not ashamed. I had a conversation with my husband this morning and we were talking about, right <laughs> we were yeah. talking about, we had a conversation with, with her husband, husband. okay? We, husband. Were, we were talking about mm -hmm. this table. She has some conviction in it. You <laughs> said it though, like husband. 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 She had to make sure you heard that. Oh, 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 oh. 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 My, you should do my. my, my. <laughs> In case you want to know, don't get told. Oh, but um, <laughs> we had a, we were talking about the taping, and so he was concerned. He's like, you know, this is gonna be kind of, you know, a semi-public platform. You know, are you okay with 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 um with kind of everybody seeing that? Because sometimes when people look at you, you know, especially they people that know me and they're like, oh, she's reverend, and for some people want to believe it because I'm a reverend today. That meant I lived this yeah. this you know this ultra holy life, and that God chose me because I was you know right. well, with the angels oh, every day, you know, and so he friends. chose you because you weren't that right. And so, but he was like, you know, is that something you want to put out there? And mm -hmm. I, in my response, I said, you know, baby, I was like, you know. I was like, Jesus became a man of no reputation. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I said, I personally, in no disrespect, I don't care what anybody thinks about me in this scenario right. if it helps somebody else. Like, I, I have no, I'm not right ashamed there. about it. It's free it right happened, there. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not going to cover right it up. There. I'm not going to mm -hmm. hide it. It happened. I I'm, I had a before Christ life. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 I had a before Christ life, but it was that before Christ moment. They got me to where I am and that changed my life where I where I know God. Like I'm not sitting here, I don't when I talk about God, he's not somebody I talk about. He's somebody I know. Like I my experience is a personal, personal yeah. relationship. Yeah. And it took that moment yeah. for that to happen because I had never I mean I had lost people before. You know, you you lose family, mm -hmm. but that loss was personal. Yeah. It was like, okay, God, this happened to me. Why would you let me get pregnant? Why would you, and it was all the questions, why we have to go six and a half months? Like, why couldn't it go like two weeks and we mm -hmm. drop them off in the toilet somewhere, and, you know, and you didn't really have a bond, and, right. you know, why'd you let me go six and a half? Like, there were times when I'm in my doctor thing, and I was going to miscarry, you know, and they would have me going because I was spotting, and he would, you know, he would stop, and I was like, look at God. Yeah. And then it's like, but then we get here, and you're like, well, God, mm -hmm. like, that just, why do you do that to me? You know what I'm saying? But, again... There's, I mean, I don't know why, but it's, there's no, there's no anger or animosity in my heart towards him for that. You know, I'm grateful for the scenario. So that was what I said to, um, to Mr. 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 Moody this morning. I was like, you know, babe, I, I really, this is this if this helps somebody else, and and that's really what it. that's really what the platform you know is for. So I, on behalf of Queen Farm, we honestly thank you for you know for sh telling your business. Mm -hmm. Telling your business, and so what we do at the end of every show is one, we everybody gets closing remarks, and then we also now pray out at the end of every show. So, 
I'm going to allow you to have a two minute um, closing remark that you want to say, speak directly to the camera, um, to whoever may be watching or may be going through, say whatever you know God gives you, and then at the end, after I go last, I'm going to have you do a closing prayer for everybody who's watching, for who might be going through this type of thing. Okay. All right, so then you go first. All right, remarks. so um, I guess I would say if there's anybody that is, that's gone through it, um, and you're kind of trying to figure out, you're, you're kind of wading through the water, everything kind of looks dark, you know, I would just say there is a tomorrow. Yeah. Um, there is an, there is the uh, there's another side to this, mm -hmm. and you can come out on the other side. This does not have to end you. Um, this need this can be this needs to be a stepping stone to whatever and wherever it is that God wants to take you. Um, but you got it. You have to let God in. That is the most important. You and you have to be open and honest with God about how you feel. Mm -hmm. And let let him have it. Don't hold on to any part of it. Let go of the whole. I need to be strong. Let God have it. And um, I promise you, healing exists. Yes. And he will definitely, you know, um, provide that healing to you. And for anybody that is maybe dating somebody, you know somebody that kind of went through it. You know, um, I pray you know Christ because you're gonna need to be praying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but walk alongside them, but don't crowd them. You know, let them know that you're there. Let them know that whatever they need is, you know, is, is whatever you would mm -hmm. like to give. And give them an open space. Don't put a, a judgment on the amount of time they grieve. Everybody grieves differently. Mm -hmm. Some people grieve, you know, a couple months. Some people can wrap it up in a couple day, a couple days. But um, just walk alongside them and let their process, you know, kind of be their process. But be strong enough that if you see them going into depression, then you know, turn up your prayer life, and you have the polite but nice conversations about, okay, sweetheart, you know, we need to, we, we're pushing through. We're not. This is not the end. It's not a period. It's a comma. It's a semicolon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess I would say, um, as Reverend Shante said, there is life after loss, and I think one other thing that I um, learned today is that sometimes we don't always understand uh, the way God loves us, and a lot of times we don't understand why he loves us the way that he does but there are certain things that God allows to happen in our life and even though it doesn't seem like it but it's a reflection of his love his protection and um, he's perfect in all his ways so he sees the final picture Amen. so allow God to love you even though it doesn't seem like the love that you may want just know that everything that happens in your life is a way of God showing his um, unconditional um, everlasting love I would just say that um, you can't say anything that's going to surprise him. So holding back your true feelings is for nothing. He can read your mind. He knows what you're thinking and feeling. So you may as well let it off your heart. Because to hold on to that is just to hold on to the issue and carry it for longer than you need to. He's a burden-bearing God. He knows your heart. He is a good, good father. He is a daddy. So you can tell your father how you really feel. Even if you feel like it is disrespectful to her. Of course, like you said, we want to... Um, approach him with reverence but keep it real because he already knows yes. amen i guess i would say maybe your loss isn't a baby so maybe your loss is, is a different type of loss um, but you're still grieving the same way like maybe it was a marriage maybe it was a job maybe it was a friendship maybe it was a sibling or a family member um that i think that one of the biggest things that i take away from shantae is that um even even when she didn't want God, God still wanted her. Like even when she flat out rejected him, he still he was that he was that he he pursued her. You know, against all even when like it was a losing battle, he kept coming and he kept coming. And that to me speaks about when they say he's married to the backslide and he talks about, you know, just being just like pursuing you and wanting you that bad, like sending his only begotten son, even if it was just you. He would still have done it and so that's my takeaway from your story is that he was he was a pursuer of her right even when she said god i don't want you god i don't need you god i don't i don't want to deal with you god i'm heartbroken by you right even in that moment when in her mind she was justifiably right god still pursued her right and so what i want is god's pursuing you no matter what state you're in, no matter how, if you are depressed, if you are, you know, rejecting him, if you are angry with him, if you are sad at him or disappointed in him, God is still pursuing you and he will keep pursuing you because you matter that much to him. 
And that's my biggest takeaway. Amen. And so um, we're going to have Shantae pray us out. And then we'll see you guys next time on what? Queen's Chronicles, the series. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you for this day, Lord God. Thank we you. thank you, Lord God, for this um, series, Lord God. We thank you for this episode, Lord God. We thank you for these ladies, Lord God. Um, and you put it on their heart, Lord God, to, to create this series, Lord God. So we just pray right now, Lord God, you will continue to bless them, Lord God. You will continue to prosper them, Lord God. You will continue to, to lead them and guide them, Lord God, in direction and purpose that you would have for them to go, Lord God. And we lift up, Lord God, anyone, Lord God, that's watching right now, yes. Father God, they may be going through um, a situation of loss, Lord God, and they may be confused, Lord God, or hurt, Lord God, or not even understanding what's yeah. going on, God. We pray that right now, Lord God, that you would break through the noise, Lord God, in yes. their life, Lord God, that you would quiet down every fearful, every intimidating thought, Lord God, yes. in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and that their your love would overflow and overwhelm them right now, Father yes, God. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We just thank you right now, Lord God, because we know your love is never failing, Lord God, it's unfailing, Lord God, yes. it's unconditional, yes. Lord God, yeah, yeah. so we thank you right now, Lord God, for healing, Lord God, manifesting, Lord God, yes. in the lives, Lord God, of your sons and daughters today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that this pain, Lord God, will lead them to purpose, Father. Yes. God. And Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that above all, your will will be done, Father yes, God. Yes, we God. love you, we honor you, and we thank you, Father. Yes, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Until next time.